Greetings to all of you and God bless you today. Hope everybody's doing well. Folks, I'm going to keep saying it every time I come on here. Jesus is coming and Jesus is coming one day very, very, very soon. Folks, if you want to know what time it is on God's prophetic timeline, you watch his timepiece, the nation of Israel. Israel as the hour hand, Jerusalem as the minute hand, the Temple Mount as the second hand. When you look right now at what's happening with the nation of Israel, it looks very much like its surrounding enemies are all about to join together at once and launch an all-out war against Israel. Ever since October 7th of 2023, just a couple months ago, when the Israel-Hamas war started, it has not slowed down, folks. In fact, the threats from others that have joined the fight have only intensified. And this is all leading to a major war erupting on all fronts against Israel. In fact, let me share with you guys some recent articles that I just came across. This is recently in from Middle East Monitor, recent article titled, Lebanon's Hezbollah Ready for Unrestricted Warfare with Israel. Another one recently in from Israel 24 News, article titled, Houthis, the Houthis in Yemen, threatened to target all Israel-bound ships in the Red Sea. Another one recently in from The Guardian, recent article titled, Fears of Regional Escalation as Israel Warns of Multi-Front War. Defense minister tells Knesset that the country is under attack from Gaza, Lebanon, Syria, the West Bank, Iraq, Yemen, and Iran. And then this is recently in from the Jerusalem Post. Israeli war with Hezbollah is inevitable and necessary. I want to talk about why this looks a lot like what the prophet Asaph records in the book of Psalms, chapter 83. I know many of you may not agree with me, but just hang on a second, and I want to talk about why what I believe we are looking at right now, this is leading to the Psalms 83 war, which will then lead to the covenant with many, Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, to start the seven-year tribulation period. Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39, many believe, is the next biblical war to occur. And that war is still shaping up and it is still coming in the future. But what we are looking at right now is something different. Nearly 3,000 years ago, the prophet Asaph records in Psalms chapter 83, we're going to read verses 1 to 5 first, he records the following. Keep not those silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. And then when you read Psalms chapter 83, verses 6 to 8, we're actually told the Psalm 83 confederates. You can see on the left side here the ancient name uh, compared to what we're looking at today. So you have the tents of Edom, the Ishmaelites, Moab, Hagarines, Gebal, Ammon, Amalek, Philistia, Tyre, and Assyria, right there in the, their ancient names. And then on the right side there, you can see that the modern day equivalent, the Palestinians, the Southern Jordanians, uh, the Saudis, the Egyptians, Hezbollah, Northern Lebanese, Arabs of the Sinai area, Hamas of the Gaza Strip, Southern Lebanese, and Northern Iraqis. So the prophet Asaph in the book of Psalms, chapter 83, makes it very clear that a time is coming when this group of people, they're all going to join together with one consent. That consent is to come against the nation of Israel so that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. And we're told in Psalms chapter 83 what that confederacy will be. And when you look at what's happened, since October 7th of 2023, when the Israel-Hamas war started, and now you're starting to see all these others threatening and joining the fight. We're seeing Hezbollah, Fatah, 
uh, the threats from Palestinian Islamic Jihad, the Houthis in Yemen, and many others, the other proxies of Iran, are all joining together, confederating, meeting with one consent. Again, that is to all come against the nation of Israel to destroy them so that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. But when you read the rest of Psalms chapter 83, we're told it is going to end very badly for this confederacy that joins together to try to wipe Israel off the map. In fact, we're told God is going to defend Israel and destroy those that attempt to come against it. I want you to think about something, folks. This is a perfect setup, and I'll explain why. So when the time comes, and again, since October 7th, we've been seeing this war against Israel intensify on all fronts. But once this war takes place and God steps in, defends Israel, and wipes out the surrounding enemies that attempt to wipe Israel off the map, this is a perfect setup for the future Antichrist to come onto the world scene after the rapture of the church. Mr. Fix-It-All, as I like to call him, because he's going to walk on to the world scene. This mess that's made from this war between Israel and its surrounding enemies. What a perfect setup for the future Antichrist to come in to make order out of the chaos. To confirm the covenant with many. Daniel chapter 9 Verse 27, for one week for seven years, including the rebuilding of the coming third temple. In Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, the first part here, we read the following. And he, this is referring to the future Antichrist who has not been revealed yet. He will not be revealed until after the rapture of the church. And he, the future Antichrist, shall confirm, the original translation of that word confirm, simply put, is great or to make greater, or strengthen the covenant with many. It's going to involve many. Well, when this war is over, we know that the proxies of Iran and the other surrounding enemies of Israel that join the fight, it's definitely going to involve many. For one week, again, that is a week of years, Daniel's 70th week, seven years. So to summarize, you have the Psalms 83 war occur. The Perfect setup for the future Antichrist to come onto the world scene after the rapture of the church to make order out of the chaos. He's going to clean up the mess between Israel and its surrounding enemies. He's going to confirm the covenant. So something that's going to be brought forth, that's going to be strengthened, made greater. Is it the Abrahamic Accords? Is it something else? We don't know for sure. But something is going to be strengthened, uh, made greater between Israel and its surrounding enemies, the many, to for one week, a week of years, for seven years, and I believe, again, part of this coming covenant with many will, again, be allowing them to rebuild the third temple. But the bottom line here, folks, is since October 7th of 2023, just a couple months ago, when this Israel-Hamas war started, it has not slowed down. In fact, now, again, you're seeing... The threats on all fronts, all of them to join together. Hezbollah, the Houthis in Yemen, Fatah, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, Hamas, all of them and more to join together as outlined in the book of Psalms chapter 83. And eventually a time is coming when they will all join together and launch an all-out assault against Israel and it's going to end very bad for them. Again, God is going to step in defend Israel, but this is going to set the stage for the future Antichrist to come forth, to confirm, the, to clean up the mess, make order out of the chaos, confirm the covenant with many, to start the seven-year tribulation period. Folks, it's amazing that what's outlined nearly 3,000 years ago in the book of Psalms chapter 83 is staring us in the face right here and right now. And if we know the rapture of the church will occur before the Antichrist can even be revealed and before the tribulation period begins. And we see this war coming in the not too, uh, in the not too distant future. How close are we to the rapture? I would say a lot closer than people realize. And all I can tell you, if you're watching this video right now, 
and you don't have Jesus in your life. Just look around the world right now at everything occurring and look at what your Bible says. You'll see several things are true. The Bible is real. The Bible is alive. Jesus is real. Jesus is alive. And Jesus is coming back. And he's coming back one day very, very, very soon. This current world order, it is sinking and it is sinking fast just like the Titanic. You need to get on a light boat right here and right now. That light boat is Jesus Christ and him alone. I'm not telling you to get religious. I'm telling you you can be saved right here, right now, as you're watching this video. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. What do you have to do to be saved? The gospel of your salvation is found in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 to 4. Believe. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. The sin debt that you could never pay on your own, Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. That's the gospel of your salvation. If you're still confused, here's the bottom line. Every single one of us is a sinner. We all miss the mark. We all fall short of the glory of God. And our sin separates us from a holy, a just, and a perfect God. But God loves you so much that he would come down. He would be born of a virgin. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. He was brutally tortured and crucified and shed his precious blood for you on that cross at Calvary. Again, the sin that you could never pay on your own, Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. That is love, my friends. That is love. The bottom line is this. Heaven and hell are very real, literal places, and you will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell's a real place. Eternal torment, eternal separation from God. I don't want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. But if you die without Jesus, you will be separated from God for eternity in hell. And I am going to tell you the truth because I love you. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven in the only name that can save you. I am begging you, I am imploring you to get saved right now. Put your faith and your trust in the blood of Jesus right now. Believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. And do it now because tomorrow is not promised. And make no mistake about it, Jesus is coming and he's coming one day very, very, very soon. Keep looking up, keep watching with me, and God bless you all.